Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusual Education. Uh, today we will continue talking about trigonometric problems. This is number seven trigonometric uh, lecture as part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Now, um, Mass Plus and Problems is basically a subsequent course, the prerequisite, which is purely theoretical, well, with some exercises. It's called Mass for Teens. It's also on the same website. So, in this particular course, Mass Plus and Problems, we will mostly be dedicated our time to solving problems, which is basically the ultimate goal of studying mathematics, quite frankly. Um, not, you know, most of the knowledge which you get from studying mathematics is basically not really used in, in real practical life. What it's used for is to prepare your brain to solve real practical problems. And to prepare for this, you need to solve some problems. And mathematics gives you a huge field of different problems. So that's basically I view um, as the most important purpose of, uh, of high, school ma uh, high school mathematics studying. So, solving problems. And again, today is trigonometric problems. Um, okay, problem number one. I have to prove that two arc cosine of square root 1 plus x divided by 2 is equal to arc cosine x. Okay, <coughs> let's just think about what does it mean that something is arc cosine of x? Well, by definition, arc cosine of x is angle cosine of which is equal to x. So, let's check if this is something cosine of which is equal to arc cosine. Okay, this is a good point to pause the video and try to do it yourself. Now, obviously, if I will try to do cosine of the left part, I have to use the cosine of a double angle. That would give me some cosines, sines, etc. And that's how I will try to simplify this. If I will, uh, if cosine of this thing is equal to x, that means that my equation has been proven. Okay, so let me try. Now, um, let me just recall formula for cosine of double angle. Um, I don't remember most of the formulas, but some of them, some of them I do remember. For example, I do remember the formula for uh, cosine of sum of two angles. Well, sum of two angles, now this is 2 phi, which is phi plus phi, um, and now it's cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. So in this case, since it's the same angle, phi plus phi, so it's cosine square of phi minus sine square of phi. Now sine square, I don't really need, I need cosine because there is an arc cosine here. So instead of uh, sine, I will have 1 minus cosine square. Fine. And all together will be cosine minus 1 and plus cosine, so it's 2 cosine square, phi minus 1. Okay, that's good. So instead of phi, I will use arc cosine. Instead of phi, I will, I will use this arc cosine. Well, cosine of arc sine, arc, uh, cosine of arc cosine is exactly what I have here. Because again, what is arc cosine of this? It's angle cosine of which is equal to this. <coughs> so I definitely know that cosine of arc cosine of this square is equal to this square. Square root, I mean. So I'll just substitute instead of this. Now this is square, so I have to have square root of 1 plus x divided by 2 square and 2 and minus 1. 
Now, what is it? Well, this is obviously 1 plus x over 2 times 2 minus 1. So it's 1 plus x minus 1, that's x. So cosine of this is equal to x, which means this is arc cosine of x. Okay, that's the end of it. Relatively simple problem. <coughs> problem number two. Uh, it's also it also involves uh, the inverse uh, trigonometric function. So I have to simplify tangent of one half of arc tangent of x. Well, again, what do we know about arc tangent? We know that arc tangent of x is angle tangent of which is equal to x. That's the definition. Now, but I don't have tangent of arc tangent. I have tangent of half of arc tangent. So somehow I have to convert half of arc tangent, half of the angle basically, I have to convert into angle somehow. Well, it's actually very simple because I know that I can put tangent of one half of five should be equal to something, some kind of a function of tangent of phi. How can I do that? Now, if I do that, if I will be able to do this, instead of phi, I will just put our tangent, and that would be complete resolution, that would be x. Questions, what is this function f? Okay. But I do know how tangent f can be expressed as a function of uh, tangent of half f. Why? Because obviously, again, tangent of uh, alpha plus beta. I do remember one of these formulas. But, well, just in case, if you don't, that's what sine divided by, by cosine. I definitely remember sine and cosine. So that's what sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine uh, alpha plus phi. Cosine alpha sine beta. That's sum, sine divided by cosine. Tangent is sine divided by cosine, so this is sine of sum. And the cosine of sum is cosine cosine minus sine sine beta. And if I will divide everything by cosine cosine, that would be um, if I divide by cosine cosine, so that would be sine by cosine, which is tangent alpha, plus cosine alpha would cancel out, cosine beta would be sine over cosine, so tangent beta. That would be 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. Okay, which means that tangent angle phi, if I will use instead of phi, I will use half of the phi plus half of the phi. And use this formula, where alpha is half of the phi and beta is half of the phi. What is it? It's tangent plus tangent, so it's 2 tangent uh, phi over 2 divided by 1 minus tangent square of phi over 2. Okay, that's an interesting thing. So I express tangent of the phi as a function of half of the phi. But in this case I need the other way around. I need to express uh, tangent of phi over 2 in this case, as tangent of phi. How can I do that? Well, that's basically simply. You just resolve this as for, for tangent of phi over 2. 
as a function of tangent of phi. Okay, let me just uh, use different things. So if my tangent of phi over 2 is a, um, and tangent of phi is b, what is it? b equals 2a divided by 1 minus a squared. And I have to resolve it for a. So b minus b a square equals to 2a minus, well, I'll put everything to the right. So it's plus b a square plus no, minus b plus 2a equals to 0. Okay, this is quad quadratic equation. I have to resolve it for b. No, I have to resolve it for for yes. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, b minus b a squared. A. Yes, I have to resolve it for a. Obviously, so let me just write it differently plus 2a minus b. Okay, this is a normal quadratic equation for a. Now, what's the solutions? Solutions are a 1, 2 equals 2b minus 2 plus minus square root of 4 uh, plus 4b square, right? That's the formula for roots of quadratic equation. That's one of the formulas which I remember, by the way. Now, um, I can uh, factor out 4 and square root would be 2 and cancel everything by 2, which would be minus 1 plus minus square root of 1 plus b square divided by, by 1b. Okay, that's an expression. Okay, that's an expression of tangent of phi over 2. Tangent of phi over 2 equals as a function of tangent phi minus 1 plus minus square root of 1 plus tangent square of phi divided by tangent phi. Now, this is very interesting thing. You see, there is a plus and minus. Now, we don't really need function to be defined with two different values for the same value of arguments. It's not a function anymore. We need a concrete value, not plus or minus. But think about it this way. Tangent phi and tangent of phi over 2 are of the same sign, always. Why? Well, look at the graph. Now, I'm talking about uh, what's the uh, uh, values for arc tangent. It's from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the function is basically this angle phi should be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Graph of tangent is this. This is tangent of phi. Now, what is tangent of half of the phi? Well, obviously, it's stretched within the x um, axis by a factor of 2, because for the same value of the function, I need double argument, right? For the same value of the tangent, I need double argument. So a function would be like this, something like that. Well, actually, I should not really put it it's asymptotically doesn't really matter. 
what's important is they are always of the same sign. If tangent is positive, tangent of the phi over 2 is positive as well. That's why I cannot really have minus, because if I will put minus, then the whole thing would be negative, and my tangent and tangent of tangent of phi and tangent of phi over 2 would be uh, of different signs. I need the same sign, so it's always plus. Okay, once we have derived with this formula, I can use it with phi equals to arc tangent x. So tangent of phi over 2, which is basically this expression, right, is equal to minus 1 plus square root of tangent of phi. Tangent of arc tangent is x, right? So it's 1 plus x square divided by x. Again, tangent of phi tangent of arc tangent is x. So this is the final expression for this. Okay, and the last problem. <coughs> okay, so I have to prove that sine of x, x tangent of x uh, let's say for x acute angle. Well, graphically it's kind of obvious because this is function y is equal to x. This is function sine. This is y plus x. This is y plus sine x. And this is y equals tangent x. So tangent is above, y is equal to x is in the middle, and sine is below. But I have to prove it. Now, there are many different ways to prove it. And uh, what uh, I'm asking about in this particular case is to do it geometrically. Well, here is where you can actually, again, pause the video and think about anything you want uh, as the proof of this thing. There are many different ways. So I will present one particular proof. You might come up with something different, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, if you want, you can send it to me. The email is uh, on, a, on, a, on a website. And uh, I can just put it as your solution and put it on my website if you want. But I will do it different. I will do it geometrically. Now, um, from the geometrical standpoint, if you have unit circle, so R is equal to 1, and you have any angle x in radians, now, I'm ob obvious I'm talking about radians here, not, not angles. Um, so, the abscissa is cosine of x, ordinate is sine of x, and this is some kind of a point A, and the angle is x. Now, what is the length of this uh, arc? the arc AB is equal to x, right? Because if it's equal to radius, that's one radian. Uh, radius is equal to 1. So one radian has length of 1. x radians obviously has the length of x. <coughs> now, uh, let me put perpendicular here. Obviously, that's not really ideal circle. Ideal circle will be like this. <coughs> and I will continue this to this. That would be my C. So, OAC is straight line. 
doesn't look like on my drawing, unfortunately. Now, um, what what is tangent of x? That's sine of x over cosine of x, which means let's put d here, a d divided by o d, right? But these triangles are obviously similar, so it's the same as c b divided by o d. Why is it why they're similar? Well, this is angle, this is right angle and this is right angle so it's two angles are the same they're similar so it's the same as uh, bc divided by ob which means since ob is equal to one so this thing is tangent x okay so that's my drawing and now i will start proving something <coughs> First of all, if the length of AB is x and the length of AD is sine x, now AD is perpendicular to OB and the perpendicular is the shortest distance between the point and the line. So that's why it's obvious that AD is less than AB. The only thing when they're equal is if A is, a, is actually coincides with B with a zero, zero angle, if x is equal to zero. If x is not equal to zero, this is a straight perpendicular, and this is some kind of a curve, and obviously along the curve you will have a longer way than directly perpendicular to the line. Which means, since AD is a sine of x, and AB, uh, uh, I'm talking about the arc, and AB is x, so we have this. I'll put less than equal, equal only with x equals to zero. Okay, so one thing we have already proven. That's easy. The second thing is a little bit more complex. So I have to prove that this tangent is greater than this curve. I mean, this uh, segment, length of this segment, but none of them is perpendicular. This is curve, this is straight line, but this is further down, it's not perpendicular to the A to OC anyway, so it's not obvious. But there are different considerations. Consider the area, area of the segment OAB, circular segment, so what this thing, and area of triangle OBC, OBC. So obviously this circular sector is part of the triangle. So area is less, but let's compare the areas. The inequality be be between the areas will give me the second part. Okay, here is how. Now, what's the area of this thing? Well, the, the area of the entire circle is p r square. In this case, if r is equal to one, that's pi. Now, the whole circle is two pi radians, right? My sector has x radius so the area of this sector circular sector should be x divided by 2 pi times the area of the circle so from all circle which is 2 pi radians i chose one sector which is x radians that's why i have to multiply the area of a circle which is pi by factor which is equal to x over 2, right? Pi and pi cancel out. What's the area of triangle? Well, one catheter is 1, another catheter is tangent. So tangent times 1, area is divided by 2. That's the area of triangle, which is tangent by 2. And I have here tangent x divided by 2. Obviously, 2 and 2 can be cancelled, and they have x is less than tangent. That's the second part of it. And again, when are they equal to each other? When the angle is equal to 0, A and C all coincide with B, only in this case. Okay, that's it. Three prob pro problems. Uh, so what I do suggest to you right now is uh, go to unisor.com and uh, choose the uh, 
mass plus and problems course, find trigonometry in it, and open trigonometry 07, and try to solve these three problems again just by yourself without you know looking into uh, any solution which I present. I do present solutions on the website in this, ca in this case as well. I'm not sure whether it's for all of them, but maybe. Um, but try to do it yourself. That's very, very important if you will solve this problem yourself. If you don't, uh, I I if you can't really do it, read the solution as it is presented or listen to this lecture again, then try to do it again yourself. And what's the best is to do it in writing. So have some kind of a um, I don't know, notebook or whatever you have and uh, put your proof in writing and compare it with whatever I have as written proof in this particular uh, in these particular problems. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.